Anthropology students, welcome to another set of notes. So today we're going to be talking about food chains and webs, which is about energy and the environment. Don't forget to title and date your notes. So title would be what I just said, but you also want to include that this is theme one in a topic one, and it's our first page of notes within that. Let's say you don't have your spiral yet. That's okay. Use lined paper and you're going to paste it into your spiral once you get one. But you really need it soon because we're going to be using it for every single warm up and notes. You need it, need it, need it. Let's begin. So this is outline notes. We're not using a worksheet. And when we do outline notes, we're going to use Roman numerals, Roman numeral one, and then we're going to put our major title. So write compare biotic and abiotic factors at the top. Make it big, maybe even underline it. And then everything that goes within that, we're going to put underneath, okay? And the first thing is a new vocabulary word, which is why it's a bright color. So the first word is biotic. Maybe you underline it, box that, or highlight it so it sticks out. And biotic has the prefix bio, which we learned meant living, okay? Now the opposite of living is something that's, you got it, non-living. We're going to call that abiotic. The prefix a actually means not. So putting it in front of the word bio means not alive, non-living. Here's really two easy vocab words, but make sure they pop out by bolding them, underlining, and or highlighting them in your notes. Now here's some examples that I'm going to want you to categorize in a second. So we got a cat, a plant, the sky, or water, I don't care which one you use, or the sun, or sunlight. Let's put them into categories. I'm going to do it by making two different circles on my next slide. Biotic circle and abiotic circle. Notice they're not overlapping like a normal Venn diagram because there's really not an in-between. So which of those two things were biotic? The cat, right? And the plant. Which things were abiotic? The sky, right? The, we could have called this wind making the waves and sunlight. Now, if you're doing this in notes, I would have written this out in word form. Cat, plant, sunlight, wind. Not drawn out. Why? because you don't want your notes to take forever. If you want to draw it out, press pause on the video and you can draw it out. But whenever we do something like this, we're going to want a summary sentence. Well, a summary sentence we could take from what we've learned before is when something's living, what does it need to have? Last class we learned it has to have some characteristics. How many? There were eight. And what was the acronym we used to remember them? You got it hog racer the only things with all parts of hog racer all eight letters homeostasis organized growth reproduce adapt cells energy and respond it has to have all eight then we'll consider it living wind doesn't have those things we put it in the abiotic category all right perfect we're going to move on to another idea and because it's a brand new idea we're not going to put it under the previous roman numeral in our outline notes get ready to do another roman numeral Roman numeral number two. We're going to pause here because it's going to take a while to draw. Okay, so after I say this initial instructions, pause so you can draw this out. Draw this food chain in your spiral notebook or on your sheet. You're going to want to draw these guys out. If drawing is not your thing, write plant, snail, bird. That's cool with me. And then you're going to want to write this table with some space. Make it all the way across your page. It needs to have the following three rows. What is each of these organisms called? What part of the food chain is it? And how does it get its energy? So right now, really, press pause so you have the time to draw. Okay, now I'm assuming you've had enough time to draw. We're going to keep going, and I'm going to go through each row. Okay, so the first row, what are these organisms called? Again, these are the words I use. That was grass. That's a snail, and that's a bird. Okay, we're on the same page. We know these words, these basic words, grasses and plant. Snail are animals, and so are birds. Okay, so, so far, hopefully we're good and we're on the same page. Now, here's some newer words as we go through the next part. What are they called in a food chain, which is what we're drawing here? A food chain is going to have arrows. You might even want to put this arrow actually on between the plant and the snail. But the arrow has a direction. It is pointing towards the snail's mouth because the grass is getting eaten by the snail. It has to go in its mouth. You know, the mouth is on the other side, but it's pointing towards its mouth. Okay, now 
what do you think the next era is going to be? Do snails eat birds? Or do birds eat snails? It's a scary world when snails eat birds. So birds eat snail. The arrow goes into the bird's mouth. If it went the other way, you're saying snails eat birds. Scary. Okay? So to describe that we have words, the plant isn't getting Make, it's making its own food. It doesn't consume anything, right? Nothing's going into its mouth. It doesn't even have a mouth. So we call it a producer. It makes its own food. Anything that's eating something, the snail and the bird, we call them consumers. Om nom nom. They eat something. They eat food. Are we producers or consumers as humans? Do we make our own food or do we eat things? We as humans are consumers. We eat food. Last category. How does the organism get its energy? Now, these are really important new vocab words. I want you to highlight them nice and clearly in your notes. The real way the plant got its food energy, right? Because it didn't eat anything, is it used the sun's energy. And we might remember from seventh grade that that process is called photosynthesis. And so we call it an autotroph because it makes its own food. It does it on its own, auto. Now we have to eat to, to get food. We have to go to other things. That's the prefix hetero. So we are called heterotroph. Same thing with the bird and the snail. Now you might notice there's a pattern here. Things that are producers are also called autotrophs. In English class, we would call those a synonym. And you're exactly right. Producer and autotroph are synonyms. You might even say producer equals autotroph. Same thing. Consumers are always going to be heterotrophs because they mean the same thing. Going to eat something to get food. All right. We will practice this in class. I promise, promise, promise. I'm going to keep going. Last part. Another Roman numeral. Make sure you title this and maybe put an underline under it. How are food webs different than food chains? Well, which one were we looking at before? With the plant getting eaten by the snail, getting eaten by the bird. Was that a chain or a web? That was a chain. This, on the other hand, is a web. Which one looks more complicated? The web. Look how complicated this is. This one makes me want to barf, but kind of excited because it's interesting, isn't it? But either way, how are they related now that I know that they're definitely different and this one looks more complicated, this web, right? Well, a web is actually a lot of food chains. I could look at one of these chains, right, phytoplankton, which is kind of a producer in the water, and I could track what eats it. The phytoplankton got eaten by the fish which got eaten by a bird that was one food chain within this big web in class we will practice looking at these and we will practice using the vocab words on the previous part producer consumer autotroph heterotroph to label these organisms all right see you guys later great job